Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you the difference between where you put the spark tester. In the last video where I tested the ignition coil, you saw the spark tester hooked up between the ignition coil and the distributor cap. Which means every time the coil fires, there's going to be a spark in there, and that's going to happen eight times for every one revolution of the crank. On this test, I've rigged this inline spark tester up to be down here to spark plug number uh, five. So this is now only going to get one spark compared to the eight sparks it got per crank revolution or per engine rotation last time. It's actually, sorry guys, it's actually four sparks per crank revolution, eight sparks for engine cycle. Anyway, the point is when you're testing this way and you got the inline spark tester hooked up to a spark plug, then you're going to see a much slower spark pulse here because you're only going to see one out of every eight instead of one every time. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And it falls. Okay, so I think you get the picture. You can count probably three or four seconds in between each spark that occurs in the inline spark tester when it's hooked up to a plug wire. But if we put it on the coil wire, it's much faster than that. So let's give that a quick try. You guys can see that in this video. If I can do this one-handed. Sorry guys, I know it's horrible video quality and somebody else should be filming me, but I don't have minions. Oop, oop, oop. I want that there. Okay. Alright, now, because we've hooked the spark tester in line to the coil instead of in line to the spark plug, we're going to get a much more rapid spark out of this guy. Ready? Let me try that again. I saw something I didn't like in there. Oh, I see. I'm arcing out of my own tester to the AC compressor. I, I noticed while we were filming that I missed a couple of sparks there, and I'm like, what, what's going on there? But it's, the spark's not sealing on this tester too hot, and it's, it was shortened out to the compressor. Let's try that. Okay, that's a little more clear. So as you can see, rapid spark pulses when you're testing the coil occasional spark pulses when you're testing a, a plug wire on one individual cylinder. So bear that in mind, depending on where you put the tester, it's going to have a slightly different result. And uh, when you're trying to figure out if you got spark or not, go to the coil. It's much faster to see every pulse like that than to wait around for three or four seconds for the engine to get to, you know, the next time that one spark plug wire wants to fire. So that's just a quick tip, and that's... Uh, probably the fastest way you can determine if you have a spark. And I'm going to show you another way against my own better judgment. I'm going to show you another way to do it if you're stranded. Let's say you're on the side of the road. I think your coil's dead, but you don't know. Let's get some test lights out of the way here. This is just for my uh, tester there. My bump starter bumper. All right, you're on the side of the road. You don't have a car that runs. You're not sure what you're missing. You don't have any tools with you. You're not going to want to do this a lot, okay, because this is going to be hard on the coil. Take the coil wire off of the coil terminal. And preferably in the dark, so turn that off. And watch what happens. Pretty nifty, huh? 
have your friends hold the terminal. They'll have a lot of fun with that. So what's happening, and this is why it's bad to do it, the spark is arcing from the terminal down to the body of the coil. And I'm sure it's really hard on the coil to do that. If you keep doing that, you're going to burn the coil, physically burn the coil. So you're only going to do that briefly. As soon as you see a couple of sparks, you're done. You, you know you got spark and it's time to move on. So anyway, that's uh, that's the way to do it without a spark plug tester at all. Just remove the plug wire from the coil. Try to get it kind of dark. Have your buddy spin the engine over a couple of times. If you don't have a buddy with you, you can... Um, I'm using a, a... This guy. I'll give you the part number on it too. I'm using this Matco starter bumper. Nice unit. There's the part number. This is a quality thing compared to the junky part stores ones. Um, and you hook this up. If you want to shortcut the ignition switch and just make this thing crank over like I'm doing now, you go up to the right side of the coil and to the little coil wire on the top. Let me jerk that off for you to see it better. Sorry guys, my phone cut me off there <laughs> halfway through the video. Um, I was just about to wrap it up, but here's your uh, starter solenoid. And if you want a jumper of this, like desperately need your car to start on the side of the road, this is the hot all the time side, the right side of the solenoid. And this is the S wire terminal. If you apply power from here to here, it's going to make the car spin over and it's going to it's going to engage the starter let me put it that way it won't make the car run but if the key is on and you engage the starter the car will start up and run so jumper from there to there if you want to try to force the car to crank screwdriver in a pinch will do that trick that's it